Broadsword calling Danny Boy. Okay, YouTubers, this is Joe from Mauritania TV. Today, we're going to be looking at reptiles. Now, lots of people have found what look very much like lizards on Mars over the last couple of years, two or three years. Um, but I have quite a collection. Uh, I'm not going to show you all of them today. I'm just going to show you some of the better ones. Some of these are reptiles. Some of them are possible dinosaurs. Uh, there's all... I'll just quickly flick through them just to show you what we got. We've got a, a lizard a bit like a crocodile skull here. There's a little lizard here with a long nose. I'll show you him in a minute. There's a, a very large snake's head lying on its side. There's also a whole bunch of stuff in this video. There's, but mainly the tortoise we're going to look at. Um, there's a, a few reptilian uh, specimens in this video. Uh, We'll have a look at that in a minute also. There's some turtle skulls and other lizard skulls in this video. And there's also a lizard skull here and a snake in this video, which could even be alive, the snake in this one. Don't really know. Hard to say. And there's a dinosaur or a large, scary lizard. <laughs> so it's quite a lot to get through here. I'll, I'll try not to take too long. I'm just going to show you a little bit of each video, just to give you an idea. Now, these can all be found on my on my channel, of course. Um, uh, but if you go to the playlist, you, you, you can pick, say, the Mars Reptiles and Amphibians playlist or the Mars Alien Dinosaur Remains and Fossils playlist. Now, some of them contain... Some of the videos are, are in both playlists, the same one, because effectively dinosaurs are reptiles. So um, there is a bit of a sort of blurred boundary between the two I mean basically a, a dinosaur is just a very large reptile but not necessarily the case uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that but right we'll start with we'll start at this end there's there's the playlist here the, these two at the bottom you can check them out or you can just go flick through my channel and look at individual videos there's, there's plenty of videos on Mars lizards and, and skulls and bones and uh, snakes and uh, even dinosaurs so you may want to flick through that way and have a look most of them are only a few minutes long um, there are some longer ones but most are quite short so they won't take you all day to look through right let's start with this one now uh, Mars alien t-rex dinosaur lizard skulls missed by curiosity rover right let's just let's show you this one to start with <laughs> I know it's hard to believe there might be dinosaurs or were dinosaurs on Mars, but if there were lizards on Mars, then why not? Um, dinosaurs are basically just very large, scary lizards, and uh, there, there are on Earth that there were differences. Uh, um, dinosaurs were not cold-blooded; uh, they were more sort of warm-blooded than, than reptiles, and, and there were a few basic physiological differences. But I'm not going to go into all that today because I expect a lot of you know an awful lot more about dinosaurs than I do. So I'm just going to show you the pictures and talk you through them. Right, this one here, unfortunately, was right on the edge of the image. This is from the Shaler outcrop image, Sol 120. And uh, but it's quite clear. It's not huge. It's probably uh, ooh, I don't know about a foot, less than a foot, probably about nine inches or eight inches, perhaps less. Don't know exactly how big it is. No point of reference for this end of the image. 18 centimeters, probably about right. Maybe 20, maybe a bit less. Uh, not not particularly large. It's quite large for a lizard, but um, there's plenty of lizards bigger than that down here. I'm just going to let this play through and show you the comparison. Now, look at if you look at the shape of the eye socket and look at the bit coming off the back here, like a, 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 a rather strange slit coming away from the eye orbit towards the back of the skull. Take note of that. And then take note of this. See the eye socket and the sort of slit coming off here. Where I think this is something to do with being marine um, marine uh, reptiles. Crocodiles rely on on sort of looking behind them. So when they're when they're just sitting in the water or, or floating in the water, they can sort of have a bit of rear vision by having this um, this slit here. I may be wrong, but I, I think that's what it's to do with. Um, so a, a lot of these 
possible reptiles on, on Mars could have been marine reptiles. Uh, not all reptiles on Earth, of course, live live um, on land. There's many, many types of marine reptiles. Right, that's enough of that one. We've seen that one. There is also later on in this one a dinosaur. I'll just flick through to it. I, I've recently re-released this one. I'll just quickly show you that now. There he is. Let's go back a little bit. The problem is that this is also right on the edge of the image uh, and it's quite small and right at the back of the image. Uh, it's only about a foot long. I'll let, I'll let that play through. This is a, a really good specimen, but it's not very big. Uh, you expect dinosaurs to be big, but not necessarily. This could be a juvenile, could be a very young dinosaur, or the particular species that it comes from could be only a few feet tall or, or, or four or three or four foot tall. One shouldn't always assume that animals are the same scale as the ones we are we have down here. And many of the specimens I found on Mars look um, either much, much bigger or, or really a lot smaller, generally. Um, okay, there's that one. And this one looks similar to a Tarbosaurus. Whether it is or not is is, a, is a, probably never going to be found out for one way or the other because, um, as with most of these things, that the Curiosity rover just drove past it and ignored it. Um, which is quite infuriating for us fossil hunters and, and uh, xenozoologists or whatever you want to call us or digital archaeologists or, or zoologists or whatever. You know, we're, we're very, very frustrated by, by the, uh, the Curiosity team and the way they blatantly ignore obvious fossils and bones. Uh, and, and the leg bone of recent times is, is a very good example. Um, but unfortunately with this one it doesn't really get any sharper than that because it's on the edge of the image i can't really go in too close because it just blurs but from this distance you can you can tell that it, it looks very very much like a a small dinosaur extremely well preserved okay so we've seen that one now this is a this is quite a recent find this one i call it probo and uh one of my favorite finds now what i like about this one is is you've got a ruler guide with it straight off the bat because there's a you can see these tracks here where the rovers just run over it now of course this this creature is not alive i'm not saying it's alive it looks like it's fossilized or freeze-dried or like many of the other specimens i've found they're in a very very good state of preserve because of the lack of oxygen and moisture also i expect a lot of the sand it may well have a high saline content could be a lot of salt in there um uh, a sodium content which would naturally dry and mummify any dead creatures so they kind of sap the moisture out of them and, and, and literally mummify them uh, my brother used to do this with fish that he caught he was a, a fisherman as well as a an expert on on uh, types of fish he, he um if he caught a particularly nice specimen he would um he would cover it in he would gut the thing take all the guts out Put it on a tray and just cover it, tip a massive bag of salt over it and then leave it for about five or six weeks and then you'd have a perfectly preserved specimen. The similar process was used by the Egyptians for mummification and uh, I'm sure this, this is what we're seeing here on Mars. Let's play that through a little bit. Um, if there is a high salt content in the silica or sand, it would act like a natural preservative and literally mummify these creatures after they died and look at this thing could have been here a million years <clears throat> excuse me um now this may or may not be a lizard it doesn't seem to have a tail so it may not be it may be some sort of mammal it may be some other sort of creature a small i've estimated about seven eight inches it could be a bit less than that actually um it could be five inches hard to say exactly it's a funny angle it's kind of we're looking at it from the back end and it's facing away from us and I've drawn around it here and, and highlighted it for you because as with most of these images they're very poor extremely poor out of focus this is mainly due to the fact that the the, the, cam the mass cam is set to infinity which means nothing's in focus but nothing's ever totally out of focus either um, uh, it means they don't have to muck around and keep refocusing the lens all the time but it, it means that even quite close objects can look out of focus and blurred so it's very annoying um, I'm just, it's a shame they don't use the uh, the arm cam more because that would be better. Um, but we're stuck with it. We're you know we're, we're stuck with substandard pictures and we got to do what we can do with them. Um, 
luckily this one was fairly close now if you look just below the, here the, there's a, a foot which I think has broken off this freeze-dried mummified creature and it's got a long proboscis like nose now this usually indicates an insectivore on earth like a, an anteater or a, a pangolin or, or some some kind of um, exotic uh, creature like that and uh, the proboscis like nose would, would have probably have a long tongue going through it to, to lick up things like ants or termites or small insects that kind of thing so this may be a lizard don't know there's no, there doesn't seem to be a tail but that may also have broken off like the foot which is just coming out now so here is the foot now I didn't think this was a lizard until I found the foot and looking at the foot it does to look kind of reptilian, uh, judging by the shape of it here, the long, long sort of thumb sticking out, which is set back from the from the uh, from the, the other uh, appendages there. So, may or may not be a lizard. Don't know. I'm kind of guessing with this one. It looks very alien to, to anything we've got, as it as you would expect on Mars. So, um, it could could well be some other type of creature. Uh, Doesn't really get any clearer, even uh, even I've enhanced it there. The, these some of these images really are absolutely terrible. Um, I studied uh, photography at college, and if I'd have produced pictures of this poor quality during my my photography course, I would have been kicked off the course. I mean, it really is absolutely unbelievable how bad they are. Some aren't quite so bad, but um, we we are kind of lucky with some of the images they've given us. Uh, which I'll show you in a minute, where, where you get the full res, uh, 200 dpi, uncompressed images. This is another example of a very poor quality image from Sol 50 here. And uh, this looks like a what looks like the head of a, um, a constrictor snake. Something like a boa constrictor or a python, that kind of snake. It has severed material here where the head's been removed from the body. Don't know how it was removed. It could have been attacked by another creature. Often, often with creatures, uh, as I've said before, that the, the skull or the head gets left behind because there's very little fleshy material on the on the on the head of most creatures, and they're not worth eating. So the body will get towed off somewhere and dragged off and eaten, and the limbs get pulled apart and eaten, and often get scattered over a wide area. So there may or, there may or may not be more of this creature nearby, but it could be as much as a kilometre away. Um, don't know but it does look very very much like uh, a snake's head but lying on its side lying on its left side so this would be the left side at the bottom and the right side at the top there this is the back of the head now I know a lot of you out there probably keep uh, um, reptiles like, like we used to uh, my, my brothers and our family used to keep lots of pet animals and uh, we're herpetologists and kept, kept, uh, kept birds and all sorts of fish and all that sort of thing. And he, he did have a, a, a boa snake at some point, I think, and it looked very similar to this. Um, you can see the mouth here and the nose. I mean, this is a very, very poor quality image, so it's hard to ascertain exactly what's going on. But when you enhance it, you can kind of see it a bit better there. You've got a nose and mouth here. A tongue would come out here and you can't see any eyes because they're on the side but there's just about make out what might be an eye here and this is the neck where it's been torn off you can see the actual fleshy material ripped here it's not a rock rocks don't generally do that <laughs> not where i come from um so yeah i mean a, a little bit ambiguous this one but it is quite large and if you look at the shape of this uh python's and here it's very very similar very small eye very large robust body um, and these can grow enormous uh, on earth even you know they can get very very large indeed uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, particular I don't I'm not sure what the largest one is but I think it's the anaconda is probably the largest snake on earth or the African rock python, it depends which specimen you pick up. These have been rumoured to grow up to 40, 30 or 40 foot long in South America and places like this. The green anaconda. And uh, they have this very sort of wide, sort of robust looking sh shaped head. 
very similar to this this one back here if you look at that so that that was one I found very early on I found this well about a year and a half ago and it's one of my Sol 50 finds uh, there's lots of stuff in Sol 50 giant alien snake one of curiosity new species um, sorry right but yeah uh, let's move on next there's what looks like a tortoise here now this this appears in one of my very early videos one of my first videos I published I'll let it play through a little bit now this is an example of a good image from Mars that hasn't been over compressed and resized this is from the John Klein panoramic uh, there's, there's links to all these in these videos that you can, you can download any of these images check it yourself this is right in the middle of the panoramic image which is a high quality image it's been white balanced so it's a lot grayer and bluer um, it's not that grungy sort of browny red color like we normally get and it's high quality stuff you can zoom into it and it doesn't over pixelate it hasn't been partially destroyed by NASA which they seem to do with almost every uh, photo they, they release now um, let's go forward a little bit and let, let it there we go yeah so yeah this looks like a, a tortoise now in this video I said it's quite large um, in fact I, I think I even said it's it's getting on for the size of a Galapagos tortoise uh, which I actually now think is wrong. I think it's, it's not very big at all. I actually think this thing is probably no more than about eight or nine inches, perhaps seven inches wide. The, the actual shell here, this part, ignore the, the neck and the, and the head here. I'm on about the actual shell size. So I, this could be way off. It's very, very hard to, to tell with this image. Um, it's quite a long way from the camera and there's no real point of reference uh, to go by. So it may well be quite small, which would explain why you can't see a great deal of detail in in the image because it's small. So it looks like it's alive, but actually I've looked at other sets of images with this guy in and uh, he hasn't moved. He's actually completely stationary. So if it is or was a tortoise and is now freeze dried and uh, preserved, then uh, it's dead obviously and it's not moving so so I haven't seen any signs of movement from this one but that, that was one of my favorite finds with right from back early 2013 when I first published this with the so-called Mars iguana and a few other things there's there's also some other, lots of other skulls in this video and in this area there seems to be what looks like another turtle here let's go back there we go now this may on it may not be but it looks kind of like a shell here with a flipper sticking out and some kind of strange thing here um, don't know about that a bit ambiguous but there are lots of other similar things in the area which does kind of lead, lead me to believe that this might well be a, a, some turtle remains because um, when, when, when you get when you find one thing you think okay that could be just a fluke it could be just a random piece of rock that looks a bit like something but when you start to find more and more of the similar things then they all start to make a pattern and they start to validify the, each other by the very fact that they're similar and nearby so the more you find the more evidence you have then the more likely it is what you're finding is real and not some sort of illusion or some sort of um, jpeg artifact but I, I don't think, <clears throat> with, with especially with this image, or or finds from this large panoramic, because they're they're much higher quality than the, the usual crap we get from NASA. I think they're better to verify because um, you're not seeing lots of blurred JPEG artifacts and and uh, compression lines all over the image. They're actually quite clear. They they're still in a sort of soft focus because it's still set to infinity. The, uh, the lens so it, it, they're not brilliant but they are pretty clear and th these are some good examples here these aren't very big either these are probably only five or six inches long maybe maybe eight I don't know they're at a funny angle quite a long way from the camera but this looks like a crocodilian skull here and another one next to it two together and perhaps another shell of a turtle here like a carapace I think they're called carapace yeah so who knows and, and there's loads of little bones and stuff lying around in this area and they are very clear 
so I, I, I am leaning towards this being quite accurate um, nothing like the size of this sort of guy of course but um, let's flip forward a bit this may or may not be a, a shell of a turtle here uh, as with many of these videos they are speculative and I am quite entitled to speculate on things that I have found on my own channel on my own videos uh, and I have been sort of told off by some assholes out there who think they seem to own YouTube or whether they're scientists or, or just nutcases I don't know but there are people out there trying to tell me that I, I can't I'm not allowed to do this and I should be locked up well you know <laughs> feel free to go and make a video yourself and, and see how many people like it see how many subscribers you get you know that these people really do annoy me and um, it's not illegal to speculate on these things it, it's all part of the scientific process if you want to do digital archaeology or zoology or whatever you want to call it you have to look at lots of images of rocks and if you look at enough rocks on Mars you will find fossils and you will find preserved remains of ancient alien or Martian creatures simple as that and if you if you look through as many as I have and I have looked through probably about half a million Mars images so far mostly from the curiosity but not all of them um, I've found hundreds and hundreds of specimens but you have to look at a hell of a lot of rocks and sometimes you're lucky with like with this one where you get a cluster of specimens all together which occasionally happens not very often now lots of people have published this I didn't first find this but what I did first find in this image the shiny lizard I think this was called it's also been called uh, a gear hat a sticker or something or, or some metal object or, or the finger or something it's got many different uh, names this thing but what is interesting about it it could well be a lizard it's very shiny but some lizards are as are some snakes um, but what I did notice with this one if this is a lizard is that there does seem to be two creatures nearby right next to it this thing here looks like a little crab let's wait for it to zoom in and then you'll see uh, there he is another poor quality image from NASA with that poop filter on it so a bit hard to tell but you can see legs here see these little orange legs now I, I think what they're doing to get the, the, this kind of color in, in the uh, NASA images is they they simply get the raw image and they just turn the blue down so you're left with a lot, a lot of green and red and then green and red when you mix them together make brown so you get this brown color so what I normally do is when I enhance them is I, I, I use a sort of um, color balance or white balance to bring the blue back into the image because I, if you look at the high-rise images look at the legs orange legs that's a crap if you look at the high-rise images it's pretty obvious um, that uh, that a lot of Gale Crater a lot of the, these gullies and river beds and lake beds are blue and there's lots of blue sand there's just blue rocks all over the place um, and this is probably the true color of Mars they've stuck with this kind of reddy orange thing since I think the Viking mission um, back in the late 70s um, and as soon as they saw a blue sky on Mars they changed the, the, the color on the monitors and turned the red on because they didn't want the public to see that Mars had a blue sky so this you know this kind of BS we're getting from NASA has been going on for decades now as it has with the moon and lots of other things so that we, we get really just a, a tiny tiny snippet of, of what's really going on and uh, we're probably lied to about some very major aspects of the Martian um, conditions such as the, the uh, atmosphere and the temperatures and that sort of thing so who, who really knows and that <laughs> until the, the European Space Agency get up there in a couple of years time with Beagle 2 um, I'm afraid we're not, we're not, we're not really going to know the truth or perhaps India when they get there I think they're just about there now the Chinese of course who knows what's going to happen with them the United Arab Emirates, Emirates also I can never say that are going to also be there so everyone's, everyone's going there and they're not going there just to drill holes and pebbles folks uh, they're not interested in these little guys either they don't care about these little lizards and and reptiles and, and possible fossils that are all over the place this looks like a, a, a turtle's skull here with a, with a beak 
They're, they're not interested. They are totally not interested in it. And in fact, it's in their interest to pretend there was never anything there or is nothing there now because they want to colonize it. And if they were to admit that there are creatures, po possible creatures still up there, then the United Nations might have something to say about it. And they might say, well, hang on a minute, you can't go just invading another planet. Um, and if there's already life there, you can't, you can't just do that. I mean, there are laws against it, I'm sure. We've already seen this, right? Let's, let's move on to this one. This is a very, very terrible Sol, uh, Sol 50 image, this one, so I do apologize, but you can see some detail in here. This is why I haven't gone full screen, because uh, when you go full screen, it just goes blurry to real blurry crap. Um, let's let that play through just a little bit. This may or may not be it's just a crocodile skull, but it's the right shape and it has a nice, an eye in the right place. This is what I'm really after here, is the little snake. Now this may well be living, and it seems to be looking right at the camera. If you look at the eye there, and it it's kind of sidewinding across the surface like you would get in a desert on Earth. Um, it could well be a living specimen, this one. And like the shiny lizard that I showed you a minute ago, like this one, is also very, very reflective, as some reptiles are. They uh, if the sun catches them at an oblique angle, like on, the, on this image here, you've got quite. If you look at the shadow here, with the sun's quite low in the sky, so it's catching it at a certain angle and reflecting. So this shows very similar characteristics, although it's more of a golden colour. Um, but obviously, with the the crap filter they use on this stuff, it's hard to tell what the exact colours are. But it's probably a bit more silvery than gold, I'd have thought. A bit like that. So there we are. Now you can actually see the way the shadows lie here, that there's light coming underneath it. So this part of the snake here is actually curved upwards as if it's sidewinding across the sand. So may or may not be alive. It may not um, even be a snake, but it looks like one to me. It looks like a snake. I mean, rocks don't generally look like that and there's a comparison shiny very shiny scales and here's a sidewinder and you can see where you see where the light comes underneath this part of the snake here where it is only partly touching the sand that's what we have on that one I just showed you let's go back a little bit there we go let that play a little bit let's let the enhancement come up there we are. Now look at the little bit of light coming through here. So this, the sun is, the sun's rays are passing underneath the snake's body here, where the body is contorted upwards and bent, as if it was sidewinding along the ground. Now, I speculated back then that it must be that it must be quite hot, and the sand must get quite hot here. And it, it this is very near the equator. Uh, uh, of course, the, the rover is in in Gale Crater, which is right near the equator. And I would expect it in summer in this crater to get very hot um, because uh, there would be little wind down there because it's so deep down, four kilometres, four and a half kilometres in, in places. It's a long way down, so the wind isn't going to be the, quite the same down there. So it's going to kind of have its own microclimate. So a side winding um, solution for moving across hot sand, which snakes do, is a very good solution for that because only part of the body will be touching the sand at any one time and it just skips across the sand very quickly and doesn't get burned right finally this one I'll, I'll, I'll call it a day after this because this is going on too long already um, this one may or may not be a dinosaur or more likely it's a, just a very large lizard um, you can see scales this is fossilized, of course, and this is probably millions and millions of years old. This is from the large rock nest image. There's a little animation coming up here. I actually spent a bit of time on this um, last year, and, and I did some cutouts and animated it. Pretty crude, but it gives you an idea of what's going on. I'll, let it, I'll just let it play through. Now, when I found this, I thought that's got to be an eye orbit here, a very, very large eye orbit. So this may not even be... Uh, a crocodilian or, or, or lizard as we know it this looks like a very very different kind of species here 
and uh, could even be a hybrid species, we don't really know. This looks like a jawbone here, the lower jawbone, which is heavily eroded and fossilised. And what I'll do, I'll skip through to the animation because we don't want to take too long. And I think the measurements are quite accurate with this. This is very long, about 20, 20 or so feet long. Um, and there are other parts of it further over to the to the right here, like the, the tail section. So it could be much, much longer, but no limbs. Right, I, I kind of missed that animation. I'm too busy gas banging. All right, let's just play that again. So yeah, I thought this head actually would fit and it did. It did fit really well. And of course I didn't foreshorten it for, for the distance between the two, but it fits pretty accurately. And I was quite chuffed with that actually, um, that that skull happened to fit on that jawbone so well. Uh, so there you go, I, I thought that was interesting anyway, to show you that, that there are probably many, many, or were many, many species of reptiles and amphibians and uh, all types of creatures on Mars. And um, anyone who says there weren't hasn't done the research. Okay, thank you for watching everyone. I'll see you soon.